Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Episcopal Parish on Seattle's First Hill. Whatever your age or your previous experience of the holy, we are so glad that you are here to worship with us on this last Sunday after the Epiphany. My name is Sabeth Fitzgibbons, and I'm the priest in charge here at Trinity. If you're watching our YouTube premiere, feel free to leave comments or greetings in the chat. And a special hello and welcome to anyone listening on our toll-free telephone broadcast. We acknowledge that we live and worship on the unceded traditional land of the Duwamish people, past and present, the first people of Seattle. And we honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. If you would like to follow along with the service, you can view or print the service bulletin from the description on the YouTube page or just below the watch window on our homepage, trinityseattle.org. Today is the last Sunday before the season of Lent begins. Lent is a solemn season, and we do not use the word Alleluia in worship during Lent. We will sing and say many Alleluias in today's service, and at the end of the service, we will symbolically bury our Alleluias until Easter, when we use them to celebrate and proclaim Jesus' resurrection. On the home page, the last page of the bulletin, and in the YouTube description, there is a PDF of the word Alleluia. Feel free to print that, or you can create your own Alleluia. I invite you to color or paint or otherwise decorate your Alleluias during worship as an additional form of prayer. And we will do something special with them at the end of church. Some of you are already having a little bit of cognitive dissonance because you are noticing that while I'm still wearing a green stole, the candles are different. The church has the cross behind me is veiled in purple, and the purple decorations are set in the church. It is one of those moments of cognitive dissonance that happens when in this virtual world we tape worship for multiple occasions at one time. So my apologies if that is causing you an, a feeling of unease. It, it's temporary. Our worship this morning is from the Liturgy of the Word, from the Book of Common Prayer, with most of our music from the hymnal 1982. Please join in singing the hymns and psalm and in the prayers and responses. God delights in hearing our voices raised in song and prayer. And now let's take a moment to breathe, to prepare ourselves for worship.
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay there, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, 
Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I desire mercy more than sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. The A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elisha. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dazzling white. Brighter than anyone on earth could create or conceive. So bright it hurts the eyes. But Peter and James and John couldn't look away. Something was happening. Something mysterious and terrifying and wondrous. Something holy. Like a bush that burns but is not consumed or fiery chariots descending from heaven. Amazing, confusing, not limited by the human imagination. Unbelievable, except that they see it with their own eyes. Brains racing to process all the sensory input. The disciples try to capture the moment. Peter and James and John of 2021 would have recorded it all with their phones. Instead, they offer to build huts for Jesus and Moses and Elijah. If they will all stay for tea and a snack, we can figure out what's happening. And Jesus, for a moment, is speechless, without comfort for his terrified and confused friends. And then the voice of God speaks from the cloud Talk about more sensory overload. And then it's just the four of them again. I'd like to think that I'd be calm and collected if I had just witnessed my best friend turn dazzling white and communing with ghosts and then quite literally heard and felt the voice of God. More likely, I'd be shaking. Mind blown, as my teenager says. This story is called the transfiguration of Jesus because his appearance, his figure, his outward being is changed. And it is a moment of transformation for these three disciples, a moment of full immersion into the glory and power of God. None of them, Jesus, Peter, James, or John, will be the same afterward. They can't be. Encountering God, even for a moment, changes us. Mark's story of Jesus begins with his baptism. When a voice from heaven proclaims, You are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. In today's reading, a voice from the cloud says, This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Less than a week before the transfiguration, Jesus has told the disciples for the very first time about his coming death and resurrection. And the focus of Jesus' ministry has shifted ever so slightly to preparing the disciples to continue his ministry. We're now 
on the way toward Jerusalem and Jesus' eventual arrest. We know how the story goes, but the disciples and Jesus are living it moment by moment. Jesus' outward appearance has changed, but his essence, his identity as God's beloved son, remains. His ministry to love all people and to lead in unexpected ways toward the kingdom of God is deepened, confirmed. For the disciples, they have bathed in the breath of God, gazed on God's blinding, terrifying presence. How they know and understand God's love for Jesus and for them is transformed. If they thought Jesus was a good teacher before, they have now heard God tell them to pay attention better in class. They are now inextricably part of Jesus' ministry. I'm always intrigued by the desire of the disciples to capture the most unbelievable moment of seeing dazzling Jesus with Moses and Elijah. It reminds me of my own desperate and elusive quest to photograph the perfect sunset or a moment of delight on my child's face or the holy quiet of a sanct an empty sanctuary. We simply cannot capture the mind-blowing glory of God in a box or a photo or even music. We can share in its reflection, aspire to its recreation, remember its transformative effects on our hearts. And if we can't hold on to it, then perhaps our challenge is to be more attentive to those moments when we do experience the presence of God, however fleeting they might be, to put down the camera, so to speak, and be in the moment, to dare to be vulnerable to joy and wonder and pain, to admire and fear the God who transforms the world before our eyes. The very same God who overcomes death and fear and shows us a new way of life. The more we see and know God, the more we are called to live with God in a new way, a way of joy and hope, even in difficult and painful moments, a way that remembers that moment when the veil lifted between us and the holy and we glimpse the brightness of our God. No one is excluded from the presence of God. That's why we welcome everyone here at Trinity. No matter your age or first language, what part of the world you grew up in or who you love, we cannot, do not, will not exclude anyone from the presence of God. It's not up to us to measure out God's love and grace. We can choose to remove the barriers that we use to separate us from one another and from God. Right now, we are being called to attend to the barriers of race and privilege, to acknowledge how the church and country we love and live in are steeped in assumptions of white privilege that exclude and harm some of our beloved siblings. And when one feels hurt or excluded, None of us are whole. Confronting fear left even Jesus speechless. He didn't know what to say. But he stayed with his friends to stay in the moment, to walk with them, to translate the experience of God's bright glory in their life together. It's scary work to be vulnerable to our emotions and to those of others. And it is when we are open to the moment, courageously vulnerable with ourselves and others, that we glimpse the glory, the beauty, the grace of God in one another. Just as Jesus journeyed with his friends, 
and they learn together how to live lives transformed by glimpsing the terrifying glory of God. We journey with one another through beautiful, amazing, hard, and grace-filled moments. Encountering God in one another or nature, music or laughter, even in fleeting glimpses, transforms us. And we, like the disciples, continue learning and living Jesus' ministry of radical, world-changing love and grace. God of Moses and Elijah, revealed in burning bush and chariot of fire, you speak to us in freedom. Your glory escapes our naming. In your mercy, dwell with us and lift us beyond all fear and empty worship. Through Jesus Christ, the glory of the Father. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Word of God. Let us pray for all the peoples in the church and the world who need mercy, justice, and peace. For the Church of God and for all who witness to the glory of God, for deacons and priests, and for Greg, our bishop, and Brian, our assisting bishop, for the people and ministries of St. James, Kathlamet, and St. Timothy Shehalis. For this world and the sharing of health and healing, for those stigmatized as unclean and for those who touch and heal them. For all who practice the medical arts and for physicians of the spirit. For the Duwamish people, the women, for the women who find home and community at the wheel shelter. For our unhoused neighbors, for all who live with addiction, for all who are sick and in need of prayer. For those on our prayer list, Claire, Jeffrey, Carol, Rodney, Sonia, Dexter, Albert, Billy, Kayla, Jackie, Rick, Julie, Frank, Tom, Jean, Marion, Mary Grace, Ben, Carol, Lynn, Jean Ann, Robin. 
for those whose lives and livelihood have been affected by the pandemic of COVID and white supremacy. For the dying and the dead, especially, especially those we now name. Remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. God, who sends us to wash in the river of healing, hear our prayers. We offer you this day, enable us to proclaim your good news and spread the word of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Every week, whether we worship in person or online, Trinity welcomes all people to experience the light and love of God. You may make an offering at any time using our virtual offering plate. Links are in the bulletin, the description on the YouTube page, and just below the watch window on our homepage, trinityseattle.org. You may also write a check or text MYTPC to 73256. Your offering is vital to Trinity's ability to continue serving people in body, mind, and spirit. Thank you for your generosity. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us to seek you and to find you in the bread and the wine of your table. Season after season, we have returned to you there. But now we are living in a season of isolation from one another, from the lives we have known, and even from the community of your table. We know, Lord, that we are not alone. Formed in your image, you meet us through your Christ, in the womb of Mary, beside the sea, at Golgotha, in every moment of death, and in every new life. Through the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, we are one with you. Through the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, you have been forming our bodies to be your body. Our flesh is now yours, shaped for these days in which we are living. Nourished by Christ, teach us also to be broken with Christ and shared with this hungering world. Soften our hearts and strengthen our resolve. 
Meet us wherever we may be. Open our eyes to see afresh the abundance of your grace, alive and at hand in your sacred and hurting world. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who draws the nations to himself, teach us to love our enemies. May Christ, who enters the water of baptism, lead us to die to all but love. May Christ, who gives new wine for the world, turn our bitterness into joy. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's time to bury our alleluias. Remember these? While we sing our final hymn, which has lots of alleluias, Take the Alleluia you decorated and put it away for Lent. You could put it in an envelope or a folder, roll it up in a paper tube, or just stick it in a drawer. But it's time to put our Alleluias out of sight for the next seven weeks. We're not going to use them again until Easter.
Thank you for joining us in worship and prayer this morning. And thank you also for continuing to support our ministry here at Trinity during these challenging times. Your gift, online, by check, or regular bank withdrawal, enables us to continue serving people in body, mind, and spirit. The online giving link is in the YouTube description and below the watch window on our homepage. Checks may be mailed to the church office, and you may text MYTPC to 73256 to make a donation of any amount. Thank you. Please visit us at trinityseattle.org to learn more about us and to let us know how we can welcome you. Lent begins on Wednesday this week. Our Ash Wednesday service will be virtual. It premieres at 1215 on Wednesday and will be available on our YouTube channel and our homepage if you choose to watch at a later time. We send out a weekly email about our life together and upcoming events. If you are not yet on our mailing list and you would like to be, please contact us at office at Seattle, excuse me, office at trinityseattle.org or leave us a phone message at 206-624-5337. Zoom coffee hour begins at 1015 this morning. The link is on our homepage. See you soon.